Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast, where we focus on how authors found success, looking at strategies that have taken them to the top of the bestseller charts, as well as what they've learned from their mistakes. Because being an indie author is more than knowing the latest marketing trend. It's about being innovative and creative and learning from your mistakes. Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast. I'm Sarah Rosette. And I'm Jamie Albright. And this week on the show, we have Jen Falls, also known as Bella Falls. Yes, (laughs) and it is a great interview. You guys are going to love it. Um, Jen talks uh, about just deep dive into writing to market. She talks about um, kind of her journey and she talks about Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that it was really great. Yeah, she gives some tips on paranormal cozy writing Mm -hmm. if you're interested in that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. She's really enjoying Clubhouse, so we got her tips on how to use Clubhouse. So, yep. yeah, really good stuff. Yep. We did. So yeah. what's been going on with you? Well, um, this week has been just a little insane, and it's mostly just because I have just other stuff going on in my life that's mm-hmm. not writing. Mm-hmm. So I am glad I got the book finished off, mm-hmm. and I can do this other, like, family-related things. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, like. I've been basically answering email and Mm -hmm. uh, been on a couple of Zoom calls and that's about it. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that the timing has worked out how how it has. So that's been good. But um, Mm -hmm. I did want to mention that Binge Books is now open to authors. If you want to go there and create a profile, you can do that. We had um, some interviews about that in the past. So if you're interested in Binge Books, just go there and you can sign up now. And um, let's see, I listened to an interesting podcast. Oh, the Joanna Penn pod, the Creative Penn podcast this week. It's all about the future. Like uh, she interviews a woman, they talk about the music industry and trends and where Mm -hmm. publishing might be going. So I thought that was really interesting. And I am not futuristic at all. Mm -hmm. So it's helpful for me to, to listen to that and think about ways that we might need to change our business or just like switch just a little bit. Yeah. Um, So, so that was really good. So that'd be my podcast recommendation this week. What about you? That's great. Um, Yeah. (laughs) I'm still trying to finish this book. Um, You had a family issue and you finished your book. I had a family issue and have not finished my book. So that, yeah, that's the difference. My issue came after I'd finished the book. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, My issue came after, well, before I finished the book, it came Monday. So I had to go out of town and, um, but I'm back and um, still working my way, you know, to, I, you know, I should, I should be done fairly soon and then just jump into the editing. But um, I've been getting up every morning and getting on Clubhouse. You can go on to, there's a Facebook group called Clubhouse for Authors if you're on Clubhouse and you can go in there and see what everybody's doing because on Clubhouse, there's not a way to meet up and, you know, um, be in touch with each other. So we have a Facebook group, a clubhouse Mm -hmm. for authors that you can go into. So yeah, that's been fun. Um, just getting to talk to other authors and yeah. So Mm -hmm. that's about all I've been doing this week. It's just trying to catch up from being gone. Yeah. um, Monday, Tuesday, and yesterday. So I did a little bit while I was away, but not a whole lot. So yeah. You know, well, family. I'm sure it will all come together. I'm sure, yes, this will eventually come together. It will come together. I'm just, you know what? I'm just gonna Keep do going. my life. I'm just gonna do my life, and and you know what? One of my core values is my family, mm-hmm. and my family needed me this week, and I could be there, and I'm just really grateful that I could. So yeah. it'll, it'll all work out. It will all work out. So, yeah. And I kind of think my readers like me because one of my core values is family. So, yes. And I think that comes through in your books because they're a small town and Mm -hmm. it's all about family and relationships. So, yeah, I think so So too. Hopefully, (laughs) that's what I'm telling myself anyway. So, also, uh, I was on the Best Book Ever podcast last Monday. I forgot to mention it last week um, where Julie Strauss interviews me about one of my favorite books which is the hating game Mm -hmm. and it is a fun podcast we had a great time so we'll put the notes and we'll put the link in the show notes if you guys are interested in that want to check it out yeah it's such an interesting podcast yeah it's a great podcast she talks to authors about their favorite or not just authors she talks to people about their favorite books and 
why they're their favorite books. And um, yeah, it's, she's had such a variety of people on and a variety of books. It's, it's a Mm -hmm. great podcast. Yeah. So check that out and we'll have a link to that in the show notes too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I guess we should get on with the interview because Jen's got some good things to say. Yeah. So today we're really excited to have Jen Falls with us. Hi, Jen. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing really well today. We're so happy you're here. I'm excited to be here with you guys. Yeah. So let me read your bio and then Jamie will start us off with the questions. Jen Falls writes Paranormal Cozy Mystery as her pen name Bella Falls. She grew up in the South and lived all over the world thanks to her husband's job in the Navy. Now that she's back in her home state, she's adding in that special setting to her books, letting her writing be fueled by sweet tea and barbecue. A former high school teach- English teacher and a university instructor, she enjoys her life as an author with her husband and two cats, Loki and Momo. Did I say that right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> they're my Okinawa. They're my Okinawa kitties. We we adopted them when we were stationed in Okinawa. Oh, so they, but they speak English, correct? Oh, of course. But oh, good. Momo, okay. Momo, Momo, Momo is Japanese for peach, and she's oh, a little, that's very she's cute. a little orange kitty. So oh, that's, that's very cute. cute. Well, tell us how you got into writing, Jim. Well, I've always been a writer. In fact, it's funny. My mom's cleaning out her house and she gave me a folder of stuff that I wrote like in second grade on that, you know, the lined paper. you Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) And so I've always been a writer and uh, did that all the way through high school. And then once I got to college, I thought that it was too hard to do creative writing. And so Uh I went Mm -hmm. the other way and studied literature, like how Mm -hmm. to read it, how to break it down and all that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And um, I had a dream to become a teacher at some point in time. So when you're teaching, you don't have any time to do anything yeah. else. Um, and I was able to do teaching for about um, a decade for, for, at the high school level. Mm-hmm. And that just, that eats up a lot of time. Um, and then eventually, like in 2011, I was back to writing Um And because my husband moves around a lot, so having a teaching job and always being at the bottom of the rung Mm because we move got to be too hard. And um, so I started wanting to get back into what I loved was writing and coming up with stories. And um, at first I used to uh, try to do YA writing and pitch at conferences to Mm -hmm. to live agents. Mm -hmm. But then came the kind of the self-publishing revolution and uh, that kind of freed me up. Although, as we'll talk about, like, I still didn't publish for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is interesting. That's, and it's interesting how, like, you start out teaching and then you shifted into writing, like creative writing. Yeah, I did. I actually had a friend of mine. Um, he's an actor with a comedy troupe. And so every time he would come into town, we'd go out to the bars afterwards and we'd talk and one day uh, I said something about, you know, teaching wasn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. You know, even though I had achieved something I'd wanted to achieve, I said, it's not something I want to do. He goes, what do you want to do? Mm. I said, I want to write the bestseller book. Mm-hmm. I want to get a, I want to get a book deal. I want to get, you know, I want somebody to make a movie based off of my, my books and stuff. And he said, so what's holding you back? Why aren't you going to do that? Yeah. And yeah. I just I hate those friends. That. <laughs> I know, I know. And I, I had, um, while they were on lockdown, that same troop decided to do something virtually last year. And I reached back out to him and I said, I just want you to know that this is what I'm doing now. Yeah. And this is how I'm doing. And I really kind of credit you for pointing me in this direction. That's this really great. Sense. Yeah, yes. that's really great. Well, that's a perfect segue into our next question. What's your definition of success? So has it changed over the time since you've been writing or is it still pretty oh, much yeah. the same? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definition of success. I think um, at the very beginnings, a lot of success was was I would see it as financial. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. all these people, we had a a forum called K-Boards, Writers Cafe on K-Boards. And everybody that was posting and being really helpful at the time were the big sellers making big amounts of money. And so I was sitting there saying, you're not a success unless you're making big amounts of money. And for me, I would be too scared because I'm like, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. And it's Mm -hmm. like, oh, I can't make big amounts of money unless my stories are perfect. Um, Mm -hmm. And so that was for me, it was like, um, if I put something out, if it doesn't make big amounts of money, then I I failed, which is funny because I started off with contemporary romance, Mm -hmm. which Mm -hmm. is not any... Anybody who thinks romance is easy is oh, gosh, and has never tried it. <laughs> no. it's, 
It is so hard and it's hard hard to get seen and visible. So my very first novel that I actually finished that I actually put out, Mm -hmm. which by the way, was four years after I was in the self-publishing world. Mm -hmm. Um, It didn't go anywhere because I didn't know how to make it visible. I didn't know. uh, The only thing I'd done was I I had written it to market. I, I, I had been reading the market and I understood, but I couldn't get eyes on it. So I mm-hmm. said, well, I failed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, so I pivoted and I became, I wanted to go into paranormal romance because I love, I grew up on Tolkien and C.S. Yeah. Lewis and I love paranormal, I love fairies and witches. And so I went into paranormal romance and I launched okay, but then it went nowhere and mm-hmm. I didn't make any money. Mm-hmm. So my little brain had been trained. If I don't, if I don't make money, therefore I must be a failure. Yeah. Yeah. And I gave up again. Yeah. Um, and then it was another two years before I found what I love and what I do now. That's just amazing. I mean, the, I just credit you with sticking with it because there are a lot of people that would have just walked away and uh, not done anything I, else. I credit my author friends because I never left the author community. Mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. always, I'm, I'm very, uh, a lot of people know me as a research monkey. I mm-hmm. constantly am looking up how, how do things work? How are people yeah. doing things? What is going well for people? That's just my own personal curiosity. But one of the things I would do is listen to how other people were doing it mm-hmm. and then applying my knowledge to help them. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I wasn't, um, I wasn't actually sitting down and doing it for myself. And I have to give credit where credit's due. Dan Wood of draft to digital mm-hmm. and Ricardo Fayette <laughs> of Reedsy at one of the, the, uh, novelist incorporated, uh, conferences sat me down and had an intervention (laughs) and they said either give up the idea of being an author and hang out your shingle as Mm -hmm. a book coach Mm -hmm. and start charging Mm -hmm. or be selfish give yourself all this information you're giving to others and launch yourself. Mm-hmm. But they were like, invest in yourself, please. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. That's fantastic, though. That's just, that's just golden advice right there. Yeah. From two people that really know what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. They do. And they'd watch me when I first started going to the conferences. I was coming in as an assistant. Mm-hmm. And I, I literally came there helping out other authors. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. within five years, I'm there as a full-time author. Well, that's great. So, and it's, 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 I credit the people that I know were the ones that kept me in Mm -hmm. that didn't let me say, Oh, I'm a, that didn't let me believe I'm a failure because I'm not making the money. Yeah. Yeah. Because, because success going back to your question, success has totally evolved for me. Yes. The money is good. I did set a goalpost of, I want to make in a year what I used to make as a teacher, which is not that hard because teachers are very (laughs) underpaid. (laughs) But uh, that was kind of my bench. You know, I, mm-hmm. I can fe- I can feel like I'm a full time writer if I'm meeting the salary I used to get. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I I have met that. But for me now, success is I am reaching readers. I am reaching new readers. I am the interaction with my readers has evolved. Mm-hmm. And I now have a very active reader group. I'm a part of a multi author reader group that's incredibly active. I have uh, readers that are basically giving me free PR. Mm, That's the best. Yeah. They (laughs) make their own like posts for me and refuse to take any kind of payment or gifts for it. Like that is success to me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's fantastic. You can't really, as an author, you can't ask for anything better than that. Mm -mm, Mm -mm. Not at all. Well, uh, what do you wish you'd known about writing and craft when you started? You knew a lot, but I did. I, I, especially as a former teacher, I really knew a lot about the craft of writing or how to put together a story. Um, I really knew how to put together a series. Well, that's something that has come kind of uh, natural to me. Mm -hmm. Um, But what I wish I knew was that your stories didn't have to be perfect. I've talked Mm -hmm. about my issues with perfectionism Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. um, in the early days. And of course, I look back with a little bit of regret because I know what publishing was like in the earlier days versus now. (laughs) Um, And but I was too scared that my stories wouldn't be perfect and therefore the readers would hate them. It was this, Mm -hmm. this weird negating whatever Mm -hmm. I was writing. I have a virtual chest full of partially started stories, almost finished stories, 
full finished stories, by the way, with covers <laughs> that never made it because oh. I never could get brave enough to actually publish them. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And I wish that I could have. Now, I look back on it going, oh, my writing was not <laughs> nearly as good yeah. as it is, you know, as polished as it is now. But at the same time, all I had to do was get brave. Yeah. And back and, 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 you know, 10 years ago, it was much easier to be discovered than it is now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I wish I could go back to that, the gen of, of the past and say, just put it out there. It'll mm-hmm. be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so was it that conversation that pushed you over the edge to be brave or was there something else that you were like, okay, I'm just going to do it and see what happens. Do you remember? The, it's going to be, it's going to sound odd, but it's actually learning what writing to market means mm. and realizing how my stories were kind of reaching the market and how they weren't at that mm-hmm. time and why I was going into this headspace of this is going to fail. Mm-hmm. Because I would say it's not like A, B or C author Correct. stuff. Yeah. So therefore mm-hmm. it's not going to, it's, it's, you know, it's not going to find a readership. Mm-hmm. Um, it was learning the kind of the, what writing to market means and how you, can write stories with a whole lot of freedom, but in a way that readers expect and want stories that I finally knew, okay, if I give them this, then I will find some readers. Right. (laughs) There will be readers out there that will want to read my books. And it really Mm -hmm. was kind of taking the idea of, I have to be a total creative and realizing I can be a total creative, but really get to know my readers and what they mm-hmm. want. And that's going to make right. me a much better writer. Right. And mm-hmm. it makes me a better publisher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, that's the, that's the, um, that's the beauty of genre fiction um, because it's not, I don't think writing genre fiction is easy, um, but it's, but it's easy to find a readership if you hit those marks that mm-hmm. and and you hit those little pleasure points that they're all looking they're looking for in that genre. So yeah. I'm also yeah. a huge reader and I think that that makes a difference too because yeah. I'm constantly reading I'm reading what was was really popular years ago and is still popular. I'm reading what has come out now mm-hmm. and hits very big. Um, I call it a close reading or a deconstruction. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly reading. And a lot of times I'm reading for pleasure, Mm -hmm. but I also read with the idea of how did this person do this? What did they do in their story? Mm -hmm. That seems Mm -hmm. to be so compelling. Right. And I do that. And, and and maybe it's because of the teacher in me, because when you have to get through a hundred essays, you learn how to read quickly. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But I still do that. Now, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say all those skills of learning like the literature and breaking it down, and I bet that's paid off. So, absolutely, I, I credit that to my ability to put together stories, to put together series, mm-hmm. and I really credit that, that ability for how well I launched when I actually did launch into Paranormal Cozy Mysteries. Yeah, well, one of our questions right. is, What about marketing? What do you wish you'd known about it? So it sounded like we've kind of touched on writing to market. So would you explain that a little bit more, like what it is if somebody's not familiar with it and sort of how you, like the shifts you made to actually go from writing to a more general audience to writing to a very specific market? Oh yeah, sure. Um, so genres are the different categories of literature. Um, and so when I talk about market, it's, it, it includes the genres in which we are selling the books. Mm-hmm. So I, t- I use it as a business term, so to mm-hmm. speak. And I know that doesn't necessarily uh, match the term for everybody. I know Chris Fox has a book, Right to Market, and he has several videos and stuff. But it's knowing where you want your book to be categorized. Mm-hmm. So if you think of it in terms of a virtual um, bookstore, where would you find your books? On what shelves would your books be with? Who are the authors that are next to you on those shelves? Because ultimately, we are going to be marketing to those readers, we want to attract those readers. And so part of my research is always reading, 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 I constantly Mm -hmm. am reading into a market to see what are the things the readers are, are really expecting? What are they loving? What do they say they don't like, although readers can't be trusted, because they say (laughs) they don't like things, but they totally do. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. And look for them again and again. Especially in romance, yeah. (laughs) Oh my gosh. And and you can see that over and over again. And you learn. I mean, you can, you can, there are services in which they will look at the market and they can break this down for you. But I think it's so much better to have the knowledge yourself 
um, because that's going to inform you as you are creating your series or your characters. Um, it just lets you get down to the nitty gritty details of your books and make sure that they are you are giving something that the readers are going to eat up the second you, your book is published. Mm, yeah. So that's why I, I value the term writing to market, but it's something that I put into practice all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so then does that affect your marketing like running ads or doing promos or things like that? Yeah, it, it does because I'm, um, <laughs> I organize my, my analysis of these things. So I have these Google spreadsheets. So when I'm researching a market, I actually will write down all the top authors that, and I do this over months. Mm-hmm. So I'll write down all the top authors that seem to be ranking um, over time. I write down anybody who's hot and new and hits really well. I write down like first in series title, link, wide or Kindle Unlimited, uh, pricing, Mm -hmm. and their categories that they're in. And I use that. So it's great for me to have a a big snapshot of the big picture of the Mm -hmm. market I'm trying to go into. Mm -hmm. But guess what I get to do with all that information when I'm ready to launch? Use it as keywords and all that stuff. Absolutely. (laughs) All all the work has been done. I know what first in series pricing is Mm -hmm. can can be for the market I'm going into, whether it's Mm -hmm. 99 cents or 299 or or full price, Mm -hmm. because it's it changes from book genre and market, you know, Mm -hmm. it changes. And so I have all that information right there. And here's the other thing: I've worked with people to handle my book marketing. And if I am working with somebody and I say, hey, I have this Google spreadsheet, it might help you. Yeah. (laughs) And they get a list of automatic comps and they Mm -hmm. get a list of automatic books that I would like to be on their also bought list. And I would like them to be on my also bought list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you know, it's helps with the craft, but then it also helps with the marketing in the long run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So um, you sort of touched on this earlier, but I wonder if you have a a different answer to another answer, not a different answer, but uh, have you ever made a mistake that turned out to be a good thing? So not launching those books earlier might've been a mistake, but you also said, you know, you learned some stuff from that. Is there anything else that you so I thought I was going to revolutionize uh, eBooks back in the day <laughs> because I was doing so much observation. Why not pivot yes. to something that has nothing to do with writing? Right. And I thought, <laughs> wouldn't eBooks be great if you were talking about your character was baking and on that page you could click something and a recipe card showed up? Oh, wow. Or you know, if you're writing rock star romance, which I actually wrote a country star romance. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and they sing a song. Wouldn't it be great if they clicked it and there's a link to mm-hmm. the song? Mm-hmm. you know, actually being performed. Mm-hmm. And this, inter- you know, because ebooks and e-readers were so new at the time, I thought, oh, well, this is the next level. And I wish I knew, first of all, that was not where my energies needed to be spent. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and second of all, um, I needed to learn why readers read. Mm-hmm. They do not read for the, you know, we we have a short attention span and I understand that. But mm-hmm. when we read a book, we, we read a book to be immersed. Anything mm-hmm. like that is going to take you out mm-hmm. of the book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that was never going to be a good idea. I remember I actually had some talks with some designers at the time and, mm-hmm. and thought, ooh, this is how I'm going to make a splash into self-publishing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that I did not pursue that because I think that I, and I'm not technologically savvy to create that myself. I have a cousin who is, and yeah. I talked to him about the efficacy of the idea, but right, um, right, right. I'm yeah. very glad that that died. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is well, that, that almost sounds like the answer to our next question, which was what have you had a, you know, something you thought was a home run and it turned out not to be so that. It kind of answers both of those questions, unless you have another answer to that. Something well, no, you thought, I mean, yeah. Um, I, I don't have anything that it, like it turned out to not be so great. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just, I th- oh, I do, I do know. Oh, know good. <laughs> so, um, I used to be very, very bold, and I, uh, the, So in the very beginning, I thought, well, we authors are just being so open and all these people are sharing all this information. That must mean that I can ask people individually (laughs) my -hmm. questions because people would say, oh, you know, connect with me. Here's my email. 
And I would email like these big selling authors back in the day, <laughs> bold <laughs> as brass. And like, hi, my name is Jen and I want to be a writer. Like I was that person. Oh, wow. <laughs> But I have to say, like, one of them was not so great because we got into a fight a little bit because the the author believed in not editing, not paying for professional editing. Oh, yeah. 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 And I... Um, so That rubs things, up I, against your little soul, doesn't it? Yes, because another thing that I did that was not publishing um, was I decided, oh, well, I can, do, I, I, I can be a freelance editor. And so I contacted them about, you know, uh, the pros and cons of self-publishing and what this, what this author believed. And, and this person was very vocal and we actually got into it, uh, into a little bit of an argument, which may not have helped me, but in fairness, another author that I contacted, um, liked what I had to say enough that she said, would you be interested in being an assistant and helping me reach my, um, reader connect with my readers and stuff Mm -hmm. and I'll pay you. And so, um, I did for almost an entire year and learned so much about the business, so much about putting stuff out and, and really early days of me learning what writing to market was because she had, had a very hungry readership and she gave them exactly what they wanted every single time. And they were amazing. Mm-hmm. And I still use some of the things, some of the things that she did with her readers. I still use today. Mm. Yeah. Wow. That is great. That's, that's amazing. Great yeah. yeah that's so great though. Yeah. yeah. See being bold as brass is works. It turns out to be a good thing. <laughs> or, you know, that's where I, that's the thing is I was courageous when talking to other authors. Oh, I was right. absolutely afraid when it came to putting out my own creative output. Mm-hmm. Absolutely yeah, it's a afraid whole of another level because it's it very is. personal. It, is. it really yeah. is. Well, we've touched on writing to market a little bit, but you mentioned in, I think that one of the emails we exchanged before that um, writing to market helped you become a full-time writer. So can you talk about that and like how it helped you uh, plan your future writing projects and things? So how did, how does it help you with that? So uh, I had several friends that were in paranormal cozy mysteries and um, I knew that that was an area that I wanted to go to, but I never really um, understood co- the the formulation of cozy mysteries. <laughs> um, Sarah being one of the mm-hmm. people that I used to uh, <laughs> research. Um, but I, being the teacher that I am, I needed to understand the form of it first. Right. And then I needed to go in and understand the market, what was selling. Mm-hmm. Um, when I look at a market, I also look at branding. So mm-hmm. how are the authors presenting themselves to readers? Um, what do their covers look like? Um, what are their stories? How are they going from one book to another? How are you bringing your readers through an entire series because we tend to have long lasting series. Mm -hmm. Um, So before I ever finished my first book, I had three covers that were more than fitting the market. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, when I actually launched, I had several friends um, and other authors that were in the market so that when I launched, I had some help. Mm -hmm. I definitely did not do it all by myself. Um, But that was part of researching the market Mm -hmm. was, um, who amongst my friends already was in it? Who do mm-hmm. I know? Who can I ask? And whenever I ask anybody, I never ask with the expectation they're going to do it. No. It's, Same. Yeah. I would love to help you. You know, I, I, can you help me? And if they do great. And if they don't, I completely understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I set up all my social media to set me in, you know, to, to put me, align me with the right authors, align me with the right books, giving mm-hmm. reviews, um, posting up things of I, what I'm reading, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and, and so understanding where I was getting ready to jump into right. before I ever jumped into it, mm-hmm. long before I ever jumped into it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that once I was there, I understood what the, what the readers were going to want. Right. Yeah. And then have just been giving it to them ever yeah. since. That's great. Yeah. That's, just, well, how that's how you do it. Yeah. That's how you do it long term. Yeah. So how far sure. out do you plan? Like a, Well, uh, I mean, you know, the, the little idea seeds are, if I were to write every single idea in my head, I'm not, I'm going to be typing stories until right. I drop it. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I actually, so my first series, I actually had planned out for seven books. And then um, another author said, you know, in Cozy Mysteries, we tend to have these long lasting series. You might want to rethink that. So I um, will set things up in books that will happen several books later on. 
Mm -hmm. I just had to set something up that I knew was going to happen later on. Um, so I, that's how I plan. I, I actually will sit down and plan out a series with just major um, action pieces so that I know how my readers are going to get carried from one book to another, to another. I have to intrigue them, mm -hmm. especially with mystery. Mm -hmm. You have to, you know, you resolve, you, you present and you resolve the major mystery of the book, right. whether it's a murder right. or, or whatever. You have to resolve that, but you can always plant the seeds for something else that didn't get resolved right? and, and resolve it later on. Yeah. yeah. Leave those open loops. Yeah, it know. is. And, and every yeah. single genre is completely different. Cause you mm -hmm. know, I, I read lots of genres, but I also tried romance and stuff. So how you get those readers from book to book changes. It's very different yeah. for book market. Yeah. It, it really does. And I, um, again, oh, I, uh, when I was doing romance um, and there were so many people that seemed to be just, booming in romance at the time and then I tried it and realized oh my gosh it's so hard <laughs> mm -hmm. it's so hard to write the kind of series that gets them into the next book and if they yeah. don't like the first book how are you going to you know get them exactly. how are you going to get them interested in trying another book yeah yeah, yeah. Well, and so and for the most part romance series are standalones in a series that yeah. you don't I mean there are like you know 50 shades of gray and then there's some other like uh, a lot of authors are doing duets so you have the first book end on a cliffhanger and the second to come along. But for the most part, a romance re reader wants that happily ever after at the end. They want that, that story wrapped up. So it, it is difficult uh, to do the things you're doing now in romance, you know? Well, and of course I had to go and complicate my life because I used to write romance. So what do I do? I add romance as a side story into my cozy mysteries <laughs> which has come back to bite me a little bit because yeah. uh, I had like a, a love triangle in the first book. I don't know why after <laughs> reading Twilight and knowing what the, the fallout was, yes. why did I think that was a good idea? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was going to be my next question was like, since you had written romance before, did you, do you incorporate like a romantic subplot in most of your books or most of your series? I do. I have to, I, I will always be a paranormal romance writer at heart too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love the HEAs. And um, sorry, happily ever afters for those who yes. are not romance writers. <laughs> um, and and I love to complicate uh, love lives. And I told my mom because I wrote something for one of my characters, and she's like, "I absolutely love her 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 love interest, and I love where you ended it." I was like, "Notice that they ended on a good note." She said, "Yes." I said, "What do you think I'm going to do to them in the next book?" She said, "No." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Of course, I'm a writer. I wouldn't. It would not. Yes. I would not be doing my job if they were just happy ever after for the." like you know third book I said this is a long-term series right like, they're yeah. gonna have to have complications and right. I actually right. just ended the triangle with my seventh book wow in the series wow, I finally I finally closed well I tried on book four mm -hmm. I actually gave the 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 love interest that was not going to be chosen I actually gave him physical scars because I was trying to be like y'all are not getting the metaphorical scars <laughs> <I'll give laughs> physical scars and they still came out going oh I like him better I'm like okay oh, no. fine so yeah. um I and I knew where I'm taking the the relationship that she's in I knew where I was taking the story series and I knew having this love interest storyline wasn't going to really work with it yeah yeah so I ended up planning a book and it ended up being a monstrous book for cozies because cozy mysteries don't tend to be that long and I think this one came close to 90,000 words oh wow. um but I kind of closed out but here's what I did because my readers love him I said, I'm going to create a separate but related series mm -hmm. that has characters that they had already been introduced to, but I gave them a bigger picture of where of this new place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take the love interest who just got rejected and say, oh, guess, guess what, guys? He'll he'll get his his happy ever after in this other series. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. They love that. They love that. And they do. They really yeah. do. And so um, I set myself up for a new series to have immediate readers. Yes, that's great. What advice would you give someone who's interested in writing paranormal cozy mysteries? Read a lot just so that you know um, the structure of cozy mm -hmm. mysteries, because I'm a big believer in um, setting things up the right way. And, mm -hmm. and I know there are lots of people who pants and do it very well. I can't do it. I just can't do it. I actually plan my cozy mysteries backwards. Mm -hmm. So I come up with 
the murder or whatever the major crime is, I write that out first. I write out who was murdered and you know what was their background. Then I write out who the murderer is mm -hmm. and their motives. Mm -hmm. And then I come up with my red herrings. Mm -hmm. And then I can actually go back and plan out my story. If I don't know those things first, I feel like you're not going to hit the right notes for cozy mysteries because even yeah. though it's paranormal, it's still a cozy mystery mm -hmm. yeah. and it still should have those cozy mystery aspects. Yeah. 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 That's how I do it too. I always have to know who gets murdered, who, how the murder method happened, you know, how it was done and who the suspects are. And then once I have all that, then I can start working out, you know, clues and red herrings and things. So yeah, it, I think and my in little some ways fun. it saves time. It does. Well, I think it does, especially when you get to the end. Yeah. Um, it, it makes it makes the ending go so much faster. My little fun is I'll add in what type of ending I'm going to have. So mm -hmm. I have the um, Poirot ending where everybody's in the room. Yeah. It breaks down. Um, it's also a death in paradise ending for those yeah. who watch British cozy mysteries. Yeah. Um, I had the Scooby Doo ending. I would have gotten away with this if it weren't for, <laughs> you know, um, and yeah. I actually will watch cozy mystery TV. Mm -hmm. And then I will, I keep a running tab of the different kinds of ending. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll choose, I'll choose from them, but um, I'm a, pl yeah. I'm a planner. Mm -hmm. Hands a little bit. I, I give myself room to change if something needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I, I plan out my, my mysteries. And I, me personally, I think mm -hmm. that that's important to give all the right notes to the, to the reader. So it hits all the, all yeah. the things that they want. Yeah. Now your books are that one book you were just talking about aside, your books are still longer than a lot of cozies, right? They yeah. are. Um, I had originally wanted to put them around 55,000 to 60,000 words. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess it's just the way I tell a story. Um, I try to keep them around 20 chapters. The only problem is my chapters can be 4,000, 5,000 or <laughs> long sometimes. Um, God bless my editor. Um, but you know what my editor says is if I can't tell, then you're doing it right. Yeah, she's like, yeah, exactly. I don't notice that it's a long and she gives me mm -hmm. notes like this chapter's running on long. You might want to split it up yeah. somehow, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. But I I tell the story that needs to be told ultimately. And yeah. and if that means that my books have to be a little longer, so be it. But I'm also a Kindle Unlimited author, which means I'm exclusive to Amazon. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that means I get paid per page read. So the longer books actually yes. do me better. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I think if a reader is swept up in the story, they're not going to be counting the pages and go, Oh, well, this one was 20,000 words longer mm -hmm. or shorter, you know? So I have a tendency. To I don't think that too. they notice. I yeah. think right. that they get caught. Yeah. I think you're right. If they get caught up in the story, they don't know if mm -hmm. a story is, I know because I know how long it took me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and un unfortunately I have to say my stories have been getting longer and longer. And I'm like, man, either I'm getting long winded mm -hmm. or what's happening is as my series is going on all the side plots. You know, yeah. You got a lot. Yeah. Yeah. We've got yeah, a lot we, to we, we get plot bunnies and plot bunnies. Yeah. What do they do? Well, they produce more plot bunnies. And yeah. so what used to be small and concise has now grown monstrous. Yeah. And, and you, um, have, you have like a bigger cast as you get oh, further yeah. into the series. And then people get upset if they don't see their favorite character. And, you know, sometimes that you can't bring everybody back just for a cameo, you know, but, you know, there's a lot of characters to juggle as you get further and it's, down. It's something I'm really, I'm actually known for is having a lot of, a, a large cast. Um, mm -hmm. And my readers Same, really, yeah. like, really like that. But I actually had a different um, challenge. I joined a group of uh, four other writers, so five of us in total. We did a shared world mm -hmm. um, that we created all together. And then we, it was for a Christmas series called Winter Witches. And then we each wrote our own individual book and then launched it all together, got Amazon to make a series page, which of course died on the day it launched, but that's typical. That's the you way know, it goes with Amazon. That's the way it goes yeah. sometimes, but we, we did get it back, but they were all supposed to be short, like 45 to 50,000 words. And I just about died. Cause I was like, but I want my cast to get. <laughs> I remember I had the hardest time because I was like, I have to include a romance. I have to include this cast of characters. Oh my gosh, I'm running out of words. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to have to take some away from somebody. I don't want to do that. That's <laughs> No, ex exactly. But, yeah. you know, I, I threw in a talking squirrel and all was well with the world. Oh, yeah. 
that solves a lot of problems. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it really kind of does. In, in paranormal cozies, a talking animal solves a lot of problems. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's well, hilarious. let's change it up a little bit and talk about Clubhouse because you're very active on Clubhouse and enjoy it. So, um, first of all, tell us for people who don't aren't familiar with it, tell us what it is and um, how it can be helpful for authors. So Clubhouse is a new app right now. It is iPhone only. So that's how it launched. And you have to get a personal invite, which means um, you need to know somebody and you need to give them your phone number because you basically enter it through text. Mm -hmm. And I think somehow your texting ability is actually involved in how they create your Clubhouse account. Because I was trying to talk to someone who's way more tech savvy than me, (laughs) um, why they need the the phone number. But for right now, it's invite only. Mm -hmm. But the the... Um, developers have a town hall, uh, town hall every Sunday and they're updating every single week. And right now they're talking about like uh, uh, opening it up by the end of April. This mm-hmm. may or may not happen, but they're talking about opening it up to, you don't have to have an invite. You can just join. And then mm-hmm. the other thing is they're hoping, they're hoping sometime in May that it's going to be open to Android users as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so at some point this is going to open up, but um, it's interesting to me how authors immediately took to Clubhouse and have really been using it to a maximum amount. Like I've been in forums, I have been in small private groups, I go to conferences. I have never seen something be as efficient mm-hmm. and as kind of wonderful. <laughs> um, in terms of, uh, especially the indie author world in mm-hmm. sharing knowledge and being supportive of each other. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest, it's been since the early days since I've seen that kind of support. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And it is is truly wonderful to see people using the app. So what it is, it's like a clubhouse. It's a virtual clubhouse. You can join clubs. Mm-hmm. Um, you follow people. And once you follow people's accounts, it will tell you when they are in a quote unquote room. So you can create a virtual room and invite who you want. Um, you set a topic and people can come and it's all audio. So there's no texting, there's no uh, visual, which is good because I'm wearing my PJs in the morning. <laughs> um, and it's all audio, which I think makes a huge difference because when you have to talk to someone, it's good if they hear your inflection when you're saying something. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it encourages a level of respect that um, forums can't get because you're just te- you're you're typing things out. Mm-hmm. Um, and Zoom is great, but Zoom eats up a lot of energy. And mm-hmm. also, we all know, especially after the last year, you know, sometimes we don't want to be seen. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And and the rooms. I mean, you know, I've been in everything from writing rooms to. Um, screenwriting rooms to podcasting rooms to I mean all kinds of things I've been in a room with uh, Todd Herman he wrote the alter alter ego effect and I um, really love that book and it was cool to listen to him talk and um, answer questions and so some of the rooms like you said you can interact and answer questions some you can't some you're just listening to the speakers talk and uh, so yeah and they it's are cool. changing. They are going to change up the the environment a little bit because they want to reward the people who are creating content, and I understand that. Mm-hmm. Um, so at some point in time, they are starting to beta test it right now, which is payment to those who are creating rooms, creating clubs, and everything. Um, they are eventually going to have clubs where they are private and you have to pay in order to get a, you know, a certain level of interaction you can follow and still get some stuff that the club makes public, Mm -hmm. but there, there is a a chance because to be honest, to, to moderate a room or whatever, it does take up time and energy. Mm -hmm. Um, It's, it's just a matter of in the author world, I think we're enjoying right now, just, just being with each other. We're such solitary creatures. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we get into this false sense that we have to suffer for our art. We have mm-hmm. to be alone. Mm-hmm. And like I said before, I I leveled up in my writing business. I got to the point of actually publishing and, and, and doing well because I connected with other people. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so this is just, it's a, it's a really good way. Um, sometimes very distracting because it, it, the not- notifications, there is no I turned reason. Off. I just, you it, have there was, to. 
Yeah, they were so distracting. I had to turn them off. Yeah, because yeah. they go off at all times if you don't turn them off. Yeah. And so my my phone screen was lighting up at like you know after midnight at night, and I was like, oh, I forgot to turn my notifications off. Because <laughs> West Coast people, you know, were getting into rooms and and talking things. But mm-hmm. right now, it's just it's a really great it's a really great place to be. There's just so many. I think that there you can do genre specific rooms or clubs. Mm-hmm. Um, we were having a conversation this morning whether or not it's a place to connect with readers. That's a question because of yeah. the format. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're all, it's so, it's so new. We're all still trying to figure it out, but Jamie and I are a part of, um, uh, I help host a morning room, mm-hmm. uh, which is morning for us. It's not morning for everybody. Cause we get people from all over, over the world mm-hmm. in there, but, um, it's eight o'clock in the morning for me in, on the East coast. Seven and, for me. Yeah. And, and it's literally, we call it, you know, come in, have a talk, you know, I call it coffee talk or whatever. And I do, I grab my cup of coffee and we will, it's, wide open. There's no, you know, one person talking, we let anybody talk. And you just ask whatever question you have, whether, you know, I think this week I was talking about how um, I have to update my website for those who go to check it out. It's woefully mm-hmm. <laughs> out of date um, and getting, you know, what, what's the good of having a website. And the beauty of it is I get all these authors at different levels mm-hmm. giving me their, it, you know, their advice from their experience and, their resources. I Mm -hmm. got in touch with about two or three different um, web page developers because they were recommended Mm -hmm. to me in the room. And that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. And you forget, I mean, I, I was just thinking about this before we got on the call, we forget because we're connected to the indie world. We've been doing this, that there are people that were like me five years ago that knew nothing. Mm -hmm. And so when you like this morning, I think I said, you know, when you, when you launch, you want to make sure, because we were talking about readers and stuff and just making sure if you did a launch or anything like that, it would be the right kind of readers sort of thing. And, and then how Amazon, Dan Wood uh, popped up and said something about um, Amazon's algorithm and then the other vendors' al- algorithms as well. And so we had that little conversation and several people went, oh, that is great information. And to me, that is as basic as, because it's just what we do. I mean, it's what, right. and when we start, when we started listening to podcasts, Sarah, or I did, you were listening a little bit before me. I mean, those were the things that were being talked about. You know, those were the things that, that we got out of podcast and, mm-hmm. and things like that. And so you just forget yeah. that there are people that don't know what you no. consider to be just basic information. Yeah. That basic in that it's what we know how much, you know, yeah. And how much you've but picked in, up over time. Yeah. In yeah. these rooms, you have, you know, seven figure authors mm-hmm. and six mm-hmm. figure authors. And there is one very famous author that has yeah. been popping in and out. Um, uh, and, and I, I crack up because there are some authors that I'm friends with um, through Facebook Messenger and we'll, we'll message and say, oh, so-and-so's here, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like put on your good face, even yeah. though that author does not care. Yeah. Um, and everybody is, it is, it is amazing how much sharing there is going on. Um, we did have one day, sometimes I write up notes um, if it's just something that's easy to write up. And there is a Facebook group for Clubhouse authors because Clubhouse doesn't have a way to post to each other. Right. So um, that's one of the weaknesses, I think. And so we had to create a Facebook place that we could actually post up notes or, quite, you know, right. resources and stuff like that. So one day we did come up with a, a list of um, author podcasts to listen to. Yours might have been at the top. Oh. Um, and, and face, you know, Facebook groups, author Facebook groups mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. But yeah. it's it's a, you know, it's a hive mind. I mean, when yeah. why wouldn't you take advantage of it? Exactly. And so. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've really been enjoying it. I think that I will evolve into using it for my research. So Mm -hmm. if I know that I'm going to set a book in a certain place, I'm going to want to go and find, find groups and or rooms. Cause once you join a group, anytime somebody in that uh, group creates a room under that club, Mm -hmm. you get a notification Mm -hmm. so that you can, um, you know, and talk to real people who are where you are. I mean, Google maps is great. (laughs) Mm-hmm. but very limiting. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. It's yeah. really, that is smart. I hadn't thought about that. Well, are there, do you think there are any specific genres that would um, do better on, you know, if you got involved with Clubhouse, um, if you're that kind of writer? Okay. I'm going to say it. And cause I'm all jealous <laughs> romance 
romance. <laughs> and and I say this with with all absolute love because I am a romance reader. Mm-hmm. We try anything. Mm-hmm. We really have. I mean, it's it's why I think that um, TikTok is working well for romance, mm-hmm. you know, authors mm-hmm. because romance readers have this wonderful ability to just try whatever comes out. Mm-hmm. And they will they will give everybody a read at least once. Mm-hmm. And um, they will try something. If if the authors are on on you know a specific social media, they're gonna go try it. They may not like mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. but they're gonna go try it. And we're seeing, you know, the power of that on TikTok. I do think that that is um, because so for example, the cozy mystery um, audience is not as um, savvy in terms of changing up social media. Once they get mm-hmm, into a yeah. social media, they don't really want to change up. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. And yeah. I basically post wherever my readers are. Mm-hmm. Um, that's part of, you know, writing and launching to market. Um, right. But I think romance readers are going to come and you are going to find, they are going to not just come to Clubhouse, you're going to find book clubs. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to be the authors looking for the readers to come join their clubs. It's going to be the authors looking for the readers clubs mm-hmm, where they're talking mm-hmm. their, about their books and stuff mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. And so I, I honestly, I'm going to be very interested because I don't think we're going to see the big leap. There already are reading groups and book yes. clubs on, on clubhouse, but I think we're going to see a big leap once this goes global and mm-hmm. um, any kind of phone can join in. I think we're yeah. going to see a big leap in that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Stay mm-hmm. up on those new trends. So mm-hmm. So kind of coming towards the end of our chat, um, one thing we always like to ask is um, what's the best thing you've done to set yourself up for success? Honestly, the best thing I've done is to stay connected with other other authors. And I work on that. Um, you know, even though we can be solitary and stuff, I make sure that I have authors that I talk to every day. I have authors that I talk to once per week. Um, I'm in a group where we do a Zoom hangout once a week. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that one's open to lots of authors, you know, we have an open, uh, call, you know, and, and sometimes it's talking and sometimes it's playing like online games. We have played cards against humanity online together, (laughs) which with a bunch, with a bunch of authors, that's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's the connections, uh, Mm -hmm. with other authors that I think has been, the best thing and something that I hope to keep for my whole entire career, which yeah. like I said, I hope I have my entire career until yes. I drop dead at my desk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I think we all do. I think, uh, yeah, the story ideas just keep coming and, uh, we just keep writing them. So, well, it was great to have you here. We, I've, I've been looking forward to this. So I'm very happy that we got you on and thank you for talking to us about writing to market. I think there, that's going to be really interesting to a lot of our uh, listeners. So um, you're more than welcome. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Tell people where they can find you. Okay. So in, on Facebook it is under Bella Falls books mm-hmm. on Instagram. It's under at Bella Falls books on yeah. Twitter. It's at Bella Falls books. And on Clubhouse, it's under at Bella Jen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Very good. All right. Well, that is Very great. Good. Yeah. So we'll have all the links in the show notes. And we just want to say thanks for listening today, everybody. And yeah. thanks to Alexa Larberg for editing and producing the podcast. And you can find everything at wish I'd known then podcast.com. And we'll see everybody next week. Thanks for listening to the wish I'd known then podcast. We hope this episode inspired you, empowered you, and made you laugh a little bit too. If you loved it, tell your friends about it. And if you feel so inclined, leave us a review. We look forward to being with you again next week.